I swore an oath to protect the Constitution as a Marine, as a prosecutor, and as a member of Congress, and I will keep that oath. In Pennsylvania, that is Democratic Senate candidate Connor Lamb. He's a centrist with a pedigree the party establishment dreams of, and he won a congressional seat in 2018 in a district Donald Trump carried by 20 points. Congress needs to ban members, their spouses, and their senior staffers from holding individual stocks. This is just basic common sense. That is Pennsylvania Senate Democratic candidate John Fetterman speaking out against congressional stock trading. The lieutenant governor looks like he belongs in the Adams family, and his staunch progressive positions frighten some establishment Democrats who think he is too extreme to be a Republican in Pennsylvania's November general election. If you don't support raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, you should live and work for $7.25 an hour so you can demonstrate how you survive, let alone feed a family on that. For now, though, the conventional wisdom argument about electability is going nowhere. Just months before the May primary, the latest polls show Fetterman ahead by 30 points. You at 46 percent, Connor Lamb at 16, Malcolm Kenyatta at 12, and Valerie Arkush down at 4 percent. And when it comes to fundraising, Fetterman has raised more than $12 million compared to Lamb's $4 million. They were in 88 percent of Pennsylvania zip codes. I mean, we are spread throughout. As political rights, the left neutralizes the Democratic establishment in Pennsylvania Senate primary. At one time, the Democratic Party would have cleared the Senate field for a candidate like Connor Lamb. Not anymore. The party establishment hasn't swooped in to help Lamb, despite the fact that Democratic leaders have aggressively recruited candidates with a profile like his to run for Senate in the past. Lamb's predicament offers a window into how much the Democratic Party has changed in recent years. Progressives have gained a major foothold, small dollar fundraising has upended election dynamics, and moderate white men like Lamb are no longer shoe-ins. For his part, Connor Lamb says the primary race is still early. That's true, but the contours of this campaign are intriguing. So what's going on here? Well, as Political points out, John Fetterman is a social and fiscal progressive, and progressive policy prescriptions are gaining in popularity. But that is just part of this. These days in politics, authenticity is crucial, and Fetterman comes across as authentic as you will find anywhere. He grew up middle class in Pennsylvania and played college football in the state. After the death of his best friend, Fetterman became involved in Big Brothers Big Sisters of America, got a master's degree at Harvard, and then joined AmeriCorps, helping local at-risk youth in Pittsburgh get their GEDs. Fetterman then moved to the small, hard-hit town of Braddock, Pennsylvania, continued his AmeriCorps teaching, and then ran for mayor. He won repeatedly and served as mayor for 12 years. He initiated youth and art programs, helped redevelop the town's ruined buildings, and turned around Braddock's economy. Five years ago, Fetterman was elected Pennsylvania's lieutenant governor. Now, on his left arm, he has a tattoo of Braddock's zip code. On his right arm are the dates of the homicides in Braddock since he took office. At six foot eight, 300 pounds, and with those tattoos, Fetterman cuts quite a silhouette. And if you didn't know better and saw Fetterman in a dark alley, you might fear for your life. But residents of Braddock say he's the guy who would warmly guide you out of a tough spot, keep you safe, and restore your faith in humanity. And given the challenges in Pennsylvania and beyond, Fetterman's combination of progressive values and looking like he could snap a Republican in half and might enjoy it could just be what Democrats are seeking. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.